Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a super tiny fanless PC from Melee known as the Quieter 2. This is a totally silent Windows 10 mini PC. It does come preloaded with Windows 10 Pro, but you could install Linux on it if you want to. It comes packed with 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, and a quad-core Intel Celeron CPU. Let's go ahead and get this out of the box. Now, I've already seen pictures of this thing, and I really do like the design of it. I mean, it is super tiny. As you can see, it's known as the Quieter 2 from Melee. Inside of the box, we're going to get the PC itself, and as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. When it comes to these mini Celeron-powered PCs, they're usually very limited on I.O., but this one here has dual HDMI, Gigabit Ethernet, and four USB 3.0 ports. Along with the PC itself, we're also going to receive a 12-volt, 2-amp power supply, and this uses USB Type-C. It also comes with an extra thermal pad in case you ever want to add an M.2 SSD to this unit, because we do have a free slot. Taking a look at the front of the unit, there's not much going on here, but we do have our power and reset button. This is LED backlit. Over here on the right hand side, we have three full size USB 3.0 ports. And moving around back here, you can see that we have an extra USB 3.0 port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, dual full size HDMI, a USB Type C port, which is only for power in, and we also have Gigabit Ethernet on this unit. First thing I wanted to do was just pull the bottom off of this mini PC, and the bottom is made of metal. And yeah, as you can see, we do have a free M.2 slot here. It doesn't support NVMe. You will have to just stick with an M.2 SSD, but you can go up to 512 gigabytes in this unit. Other than that, everything else is soldered to the board, so there's really no user upgradability except for this extra storage. As for the specs on the Quieter 2, for the CPU, we have the Intel J4125. This is a quad-core Celeron CPU, base clock of 2 GHz with a boost up to 2.6. Built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics running at up to 750 MHz. 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2133 MHz. We also have 128GB of storage built-in. And as you saw, we can add an M.2 SSD up to 512GB. This does have AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 built-in, and it comes right out of the box running Windows 10 Pro. Alright, so here we are. It is running Windows 10 Pro. I've installed a bunch of stuff that we're going to test out here, but one thing that I'm actually kind of surprised about is the CPU temperature. Now this does boost up to 2.6 from within the BIOS. You can actually change the wattage up to 25 watts, but this CPU is really going to kind of max out around 12 to 13 watts. That's what we're sitting at right now, so we can get the maximum performance out of the CPU and the GPU. As you can see, we have that J4125, 8 gigs of DDR4 running at 2133, and the built-in UHD 600 graphics. Uh, as for web browsing, pretty snappy here. We got AC Wi-Fi built-in. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd always be plugged into Ethernet, but it does a pretty decent job. We'll just head over here. So yeah, I mean, not bad at all. You wanna browse your favorite websites, everything's gonna load up really smoothly. And for an everyday little desktop, this would work out just fine if you want to do some YouTube video playback, document editing, email checking. I mean, it's a low-powered PC, but it can get you by if this is all you need. Another thing I always like to test out with these mini PCs is WebGL performance, because, I mean, if you're getting something like this, you're mainly probably just going to be browsing online with it. Uh, here we are at 500 fish. FPS is up here. Go up to 1,000. Does start to struggle a bit. Let's see what that CPU's doing. Not hitting up that CPU as hard as I thought it would. We're mainly maxing out this GPU with that WebGL. So uh, going up to 5,000, it does drop down. But we're sitting pretty steady at 60 with 500 fish on screen. Not bad at all for a low wattage chip like this. I mean, like I said, this is running at a maximum of around 13 watts. Now, one thing that a lot of these manufacturers claim with the 4125 is these little things can handle 4K video. And in the past, I've actually had pretty good luck with streaming and native playback. So we're going to go ahead and move over to my 4K monitor now and just see how it handles 4K video. All right, so here we are. We got a BenQ 4K monitor. Windows is set at 4K with no scaling. Here's a YouTube video. Should be running at 4K 60. I do have Stats for Nerds up in the top left-hand corner. We'll get a bit closer in a second. I just kind of wanted to see how it looked to see if we got any freezing or anything like that. But so far, so good. We do have some drop frames on the initial load-in, and it's definitely looking like more than, uh, you know, a higher-end system would drop on the initial load-in. Usually, it's anywhere from 10 to 35 frames. 
with this one here, we did drop 104 frames on the initial load in, but as you can see, I mean, it's going steady. We're not getting any more drops after that. And by the way, I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network. We're not using Ethernet here. I mean, other than that initial drop, it's not doing a bad job at all. At true 4K, as you can see, the viewpoint and the video is set at 4K. Next thing I had to test was the 4K version of Big Buck Bunny. I test this on all little ARM devices that I get, and most of the time, I'd say 98% of the time, it can't run it well. But with these x86 Celeron chips, I've always had great luck with it. I'm using the built-in Windows player here, and it's running it very smoothly. So yeah, the Mi Lee Quieter 2 can handle 4K streaming and 4K native playback. Next thing I wanted to do was run a couple benchmarks. Here we have Geekbench 5, single core at 436, multi at 1441. Next up, some GPU benchmarks. First up, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a cross-platform benchmark for Vulkan. Score, 1083. And finally, Night Raid with 1792. So it's definitely not a gaming machine, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't test some stuff out on this. First up, we have Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. 12 chunks, fancy graphics off, which actually didn't seem to help much. You could probably turn that back on and get just as good performance. But uh, we're not quite locked at 60 at 12 chunks. You will have to drop this down to 8 chunks to get locked at 60. But overall, I mean, it's doing a decent job, and this is a very well-optimized game. Next on the list, we have Half-Life 2, 720p, low. We averaged 81 FPS out of this one. I knew it was going to run well at 720p. And we're sitting at low right now, but you could turn some of this stuff up to medium and still get a decent frame rate. And finally, for PC gaming, we have the original Skyrim. Uh, unfortunately, it's not doing a great job. We got a maximum of 33 FPS out of it and an average of 28. So yeah, this is not playable on this machine. Moving over to some emulation, this 4125 actually does a pretty decent job, and if you wanted to do N64, it will. But first up, we have Dreamcast using the Redream emulator, and I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960. Moving over to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We're at 3x resolution. This is Tekken 6 using the Vulcan back end. I also tested DirectX 11 and it seemed to work just as well. Not all games are going to be playable at 3x. When it comes to things like Chains of Olympus, you will have to drop it down to 1, but it will run at 60. And finally here, the Dolphin Emulator. Whenever I test the J4125, I usually go with some lower-end GameCube games, and they seem to run well at the native resolution using the Vulcan backend, so for this one I figured I'd test a Wii game, and uh, it is running at full speed. Now this game natively ran at 30 FPS, and that's what we have here. So it does a decent job at emulation, but when it comes to native PC gaming, I mean, there's really not much that's going to run on here, at least newer games. Older stuff's going to work, as you saw, like Half-Life 2, but now that we have a lot of different cloud gaming services, this thing should work out pretty well. One of my favorites right now is xCloud or Xbox Game Pass Game Streaming, whatever they're calling it now. It is available for Windows and I have an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Let's get into a little bit of gameplay and see how this thing performs. And here we have it. I am connected over Ethernet just to give me a better stable connection here and this little machine will handle cloud gaming. Be it Stadia, xCloud as you see here with GTA 5, or even GeForce Now. When it comes to total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter, at idle this only pulls 2.2 watts, gaming 9.4, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 15.6 watts in my extreme test. So not only is this a totally silent PC, it's an ultra-low power PC also. So overall, I think they've done a great job with this little mini PC. It is silent, and the highest CPU temperature that I recorded out of this thing through all of my tests was 81 degrees Celsius, and this thing idles around 36 degrees. 
When it comes to performance, basically this is all we're going to get out of the J4125. If we added another 8 gigs of RAM here, it's not going to help out. We have plenty of RAM with 8 gigs going with this lower end Celeron CPU. So if you're looking for a totally silent, low power consumption PC for web browsing, email checking, some light emulation, and even some cloud gaming, the Quieter 2 actually might be a good option for you. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this or maybe picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Quieter 2, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.